Hey guys, so hardware. Uh, I get asked a lot uh, what kind of you know, CPU, uh, graphics card, or what kind of peripherals I need. So I'm going to go over that real quick here in this video. So I'm always keeping the idea that you should have as much FPS as you can, but sometimes you know you just don't don't have the money for it. And as a student, as a, you know, somebody without a job, you might you know struggle or try and and make the best bang for your buck. So I'm going to try and help you do that here. Um, so as I said in my first video, uh, you always want about 300 FPS or more, but that's not always possible. But one thing you really don't want is dip under 128 since you know most competitive servers are going to be 128 tick uh, you don't want to dip under that so at least you get at least the same refresh rate or I mean the same you know refresh in your game than the server gives you so let's start with the CPU first so here as you see I wrote uh, you know i7 920 plus or you know the AMD Phantom 2 uh, 6 core 1055T. Uh, in order to, you know, give you an idea, uh, I brought up this list. It's from CPUbenchmark.net, so you can check that out yourself. I'll post the link later in the video description. You can see that the i7-920 sits here about 5,000 point, points. So it's it's not sold anymore, new at least, not in my area. And it's probably not sold anywhere anymore because it's the first generation i7, I believe. Uh, so you might want to look into something newer. Uh, and it's a they're good processors at that point. So you you won't have any problem getting 300 FPS. And i7-920 is what I used to run. That being said, mine was overclocked. But still, uh, anything. And you have some really cheap stuff. If you look into maybe the AMD instead of the, the instead of Intel, you should get decent numbers. So you can check that list. Uh, anything pretty much over 5,000 points should get, give you a decent machine. So that's that. Uh, for video card, I would suggest the NVIDIA GTX 560 Ti and over. And the AMD equivalent would be the AMD 6970. So same thing here. So on videobenchmark.net this time, uh, you can see that the GTX 560 Ti sits at uh, 3,500 pretty much, and the 6970 is right under it actually at 3,500 as well. So anything over that will give you a decent amount. Now, needless to say, CS:GO doesn't require that much graphic uh, as much as CPU. So I think a 560 Ti will do just to work or you can maybe go with a 660 if you're not sold anymore and what I have personally is a 670 so as you can see uh, it's a lot more expensive right here but you know it is what it is now for RAM um, to be honest I mean if you're only gaming uh, you can you, you can handle four gigabytes it really doesn't matter um, I have eight personally but four will do the job just fine. Six as well. It really isn't that big a deal. Um, yeah. So sound cards. Uh, I know a lot of people that run, you know, just on their on their internal board, and that's totally fine. To be honest, like if people tell you that you absolutely need a a sound card, I would say they're lying. If it's just for game purposes, that's it. That is. But you know, sometimes it's just nice to have a sound card for you know sound quality. Just if you're listening to movies or watching movies, sorry, or listening to to music and stuff like that. Or if you're like me and you need a uh, an amplifier for your headset. And I'm gonna go over that a bit later. But what I could recommend, uh, best bang for the buck, would be if you're looking for internal, I would go with the Asus Sonar. Uh, great card. I had it uh, before uh, I sold it back because I actually wanted USB. Uh, and for USB, uh, I would suggest Creative. Even though they don't have the best products nor prices, uh, their USB products seem to be pretty good. Now, maybe there's, I'm not a Sam King or anything, so maybe some other companies are going to have, you know, 
equally or, or better products for less. So, you know, go ahead and get that. As I said, I was really looking for an amplifier. And the Sound Blaster Recon 3D did exactly that. It wasn't that expensive either. It was like 70 bucks. So, that's that. Now, peripherals. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, you obviously want a good mice. A good mouse, sorry. Uh, and you want the, the mouse pad to go with it. Now, I'm going to go over mouse over mice right now. Um, the mice I would recommend would be mostly any Zowie product because they use the same sensor for each and every one of them. And they're proven to be good. Now, at, and okay, I'm just going to go over that first. Uh, the Logitech G400, which is the new version of the MX518, which, you know, is also a renowned mouse. It's a great mouse really nothing to say about it and the Razer Death Adder uh, which is also a proven to be great mouse uh, they have the new two uh, 2013 edition uh, I have the black I'm currently using the Zowie FK myself so I'm just gonna go over that real quick uh, I would not recommend a laser mouse I used to have the G500 I actually have two G500s uh, they both died on me. Uh, Logitech is a great return policy, though, so that was great. But laser is just isn't that good, to be honest. And it, it's a bitch to get a good mouse pad for them because you need a hard pad because laser doesn't track on cloth and whatnot. It's just a bitch. Um, any other mouse? I would not recommend anything else from Razer, to be honest. Uh, I've had really bad experiences with their mice, other than Neth Adder, that is. Uh, Logitech has a few other mice that are decent. I would not know, uh, quite honestly. You can check on Neast Reality. Uh, their latest guide d dates from 2007, so so it's a bit old. Um, but you can look up on ESCA and every forum. Um, you're going to find really useful information. Um... But don't just buy a Razer because it's Razer and because people told you that. Or don't buy, you know, just that company because it's really cool and it's got LEDs. Because that's really not what you want. What you want is, uh, you know, a sensor that's as flawless as possible and a mouse shape that's going to fit you perfectly. And that's not going to, you know, make your wrist tired too much. Now, that being said, you want a mouse pad to go with it. Uh, you don't want to wear your mouse feet too hard. Or too fast, rather. That doesn't mean you don't necessarily want a hard pad, though. Uh, I've known, and I know great players with hard pads. I know great players with, you know, uh, soft pads as well. So, uh, to name a few soft pads, I mean, there's the obvious, there's the obvious QCK Plus. There's the QCK Heavy, pretty much the same mouse pad. Uh, there's also the QCK Teams, which is a uh, different texture. It feels a little bit more. Uh, plastic-ish, I would say. Um, I believe Razer has the Goliathus, which is a decent pad. I had the Goliathus Speed. It's alright. I didn't... I don't know. It was alright. Uh, and there's all these other Pure Track. Um, there's this Japanese company, I forgot. Anyway, there's a lot of them. Uh, as long as they're usually the best is to usually have one color so black or something like that because uh, sensors tend to fuck up on color for some reason as I said I'm not a great I don't know much about mice just repeating what I heard so uh, yep so that's that uh, for hard pads Seal Series uh, has a bunch of them I used to have the 9HD uh, from my G500 I sold that it's a Still a great mouse pad. Uh, Razer came out with a new one recently. Let's go check it out. Uh, which I heard good, good reviews about. So that's... No, sorry. There you go. So I think... Well, you know, I don't remember which one it is. But anyway, uh, 
yeah, still series mostly. You can read the reviews. Don't base yourself off of what some, you know, biased source might tell you. Um, for keyboards. Now, that's a pretty touchy subject. You might just... You might just keep your, you know, original Dell, HP, you know, whatever, Toshiba, I guess. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's nice. The keyboard is something nice to have uh, if you're looking into uh, mechanical, but it's not something you need. Uh, I personally have the SteelSeries 6GV2. Uh, it's a great keyboard. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's pretty loud as well. But it's a good keyboard all in all. And the fact that it's mechanical is you can replace, as you can see, you can replace and, you know, wash everything in it pretty easily. It's great for that. Uh, so that's pretty much keyboards. Any mechanical keyboard. I know uh, Razer has the, um, the Black Widow, which is also pretty good. It's pretty expensive as well. Uh, there's a whole bunch of companies uh, you can look them up yourself there's a lot of good keyboards out there just don't spend I mean unless you, you want that but don't spend any big money in keyboards that are not mechanical if you're not gonna get a mechan me mechanical keyboard just get something like normal because you're gonna lose your money all in all now headphones or headsets um, that is the subject I want to talk about so I personally have uh, the steel, uh, sorry, <laughs> Sennheiser's PC350. Uh, I love these headsets. Not not everybody like them, but a lot of people actually do like them. I mean, um, so here's the thing: sound is important to some people. It's not important to other people. So I would say best bang for your buck would be a pair. Of Steel Series Siberia V2. So we're gonna go on Steel Series website, and we're gonna go look at their stuff. So Steel Series Siberia V2. They're pretty cheap. I think they're something like eighty dollars or so. They have okay quality. Uh, not the greatest. Not the worst. Um, yeah, they have. Uh, you know they're cool. Uh, they're open ear, and they have a retractable mic. So that's it. Uh, you don't need an amplifier for them. So if you're not looking into buying a sound card or anything, they're a great alternative. Uh, some of them come with a USB sound card with it. So whenever you go to LAN or something, you have the same quality. Um, there's also just like normal headphones, like quality headphones that I obviously don't have. Uh, that I don't know much about again. You can look that up yourself. Uh, and you know, there's Sennheisers that make the PC 350, 360. The deal about them though is if you want the best quality, you want to have an amplifier for them. So, which is why I bought this right here. And that's it. I mean, there's also the monitor. Uh, that's also something else that's cool to have but not necessarily that you want, or I mean need, uh, as in 120 yards. So having double the refresh rate is definitely a big deal for, for me. It's a lot crisper, it's a lot clearer, it's just nicer on the eye, you know, the image quality, because it's obviously you know a higher grade monitor, it's also gonna be a lot better. Uh, so all these little things, they're expensive though. So if you're looking into, you know, ju you just want to play, you don't necessarily have extra money, just don't buy a 120 hertz monitor. It's not going to be that big a deal. I mean, you can perfectly, you can use your normal monitor, maybe try and use a lower resolution, use 75 hertz. I mean, if that's what you got to do, you just got to do it. Just don't spend the extra money if you don't have it. Um, yeah think that's mostly about it I mean you don't really need an SSD for CSGO let's be honest uh, and yeah that's it so 
I hope you like this video and if you have any questions any comments you can leave them below I will read everything uh, so yeah see you guys next time